Hi, this is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, I'm going to talk about some important sales that we saw this week, uh, how it looks like this is impacting the comic market, and if you can tell from the uh, empty spot back there, I've got an X-Men book that I'm going to open up later on in this video, so stay tuned for that. Alright, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. If you haven't watched one of my previous videos on the comic market and recent sales, what I like to do is look at sales that I saw throughout the last week that stuck out to me as either important or exceptionally high. Uh, it also, you know, I, I'm looking at things where I might see trends where books are selling for maybe less than, than what I was expecting. And so that's what I'm going to be mostly talking about, but like I mentioned in the intro, I've also got a book that I'm going to open up as part of this, and it's going to go back up on that, that shelf. So if you've watched, again, some of my prior videos, my recent ones, uh, you can see that the, uh, the books on the shelf have changed to X-Men, and I've been talking a lot about uh, X-Men and the, the big sales that we've seen recently with them, so I thought I'd uh, throw some of, some of my favorite X-Men books up there. Uh, so, but where we're going to start uh, isn't at X-Men. We're going to start at the other end of the alphabet. And we're going to start with Amazing Spider-Man. And this week we saw a record sale for Amazing Spider-Man 361 in a CGC 9.8. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a 9.8 <laughs> of that book. But I do have a 9.6. And you can see here, this one is a, a new stand. The record sale that we saw this week, though, was a direct edition, so it has a you know picture of Spider-Man's face, you know, kind of down on the bottom here where that barcode is, and we saw that sale at one thousand six hundred and twenty dollars, and this is the first appearance of Carnage. We know that movie is coming, <laughs> you know, it's we I mean, there's there's got to be a trailer at some point, and uh, even though these books have already been spiking, I definitely expect to see additional increases in prices uh, when we see, you know, Carnage actually on screen. Uh, now, this was kind of a strange high sale. I've mentioned these before where sometimes you get these weird high sales on, on heritage auctions that don't really align with what you see on, on eBay, you know, so other major places that you might find these books. Because on eBay right now, you can pick up multiple copies around 1300 bucks. I think the low I saw was 1200 and so this high sale is, I feel like it's a little bit of an anomaly. The prior high was 1,530 though, so it may be kind of a premonition to what we should expect to see with these books. So it might be a time to, if, if, you, know, if you see those $1,200 or $1,300 books and you've got the money to do it, you know, maybe pick one of those up. Now that $1,530 sale happened on February 7th, so it's you know, a little over two months ago now. And so it's, it's really leveled off since then. And that's, that tends to be what we see with a lot of these books. If we don't get any news for a while and, you know, people are focusing on other books because you can only focus on so many things at a time, you start to see prices decline a little bit. However, the way to really look at this is that even though it's down from, you know, around 1530 to, you know, on eBay available for around 1200 to 1300 a year ago, this was a $400 book. I mean, across the board. I was checking multiple sales about a year ago, and it was 375 to about $425. So even after that drop, that is an increase of 200%. And if you're talking about this high sale, that, you know, at six, uh, 1620 that's an increase of 300%. So that, those are huge increases. If you're new to the comic, you know, kind of like market or, you know, collecting, buying and selling comics... 300% a year is not a normal thing. <laughs> so uh, those are some really incredible numbers. And so uh, it's something to, you know, just really pay attention to and see what happens when that movie comes out or we start to see a trailer. Now, there are other options for this book, but you don't really have to go to other books necessarily if you want that first appearance of Carnage. I mean, it's really expensive up in a high grade like this, you know, like I said, you know, over $1,000. But go down to a 9.6, and it's going to be about 500, a 9.4, 400, 9.2, 300. And if you're looking at mid-grades, it kind of levels off around 100 to $150. That's about the baseline of where you're going to be able to pick up that book. You could also go to a second appearance if you want, if you wanted to get that really high grade, you know, a 9.8. Uh, and I actually, I like the cover of the second appearance more. That's Amazing Spider-Man 362. I'll, I'll plug a picture of it up here. And that one 
also has Venom on the cover, which I think is great for the movie. And it's only $175 to $200 in a 9.8. And that's up from about 90 to 100 a year ago. So that's only 100% versus 2 to 300% that we were seeing with Amazing Spider-Man 361. So 362 might be a great book to pick up. It may have a little more room on it. <laughs> now, the next book I'm going to talk about is it is, uh, it is one of my favorite books that I have just because it is so ridiculous what this book looks like. And if, you've see, if you follow me on Instagram, you maybe have seen me show this book before. But it's Avengers number four. <laughs> and so this is my copy. This is possibly the crappiest copy in existence of Avengers number four. I mean, at least it has the front cover. It's missing the back cover, and you can see Captain America clearly, but... I don't know what happened to this book, if somebody dumped oil on it, if it was in a fire, or what happened to it, but it's in terrible shape. Uh, and, um, but the one that sold this week was not. Uh, we had a CGC 7.0 that sold for $5,520. Now, if you're not aware, this is the first appearance of the Silver Age Captain America. Uh, he appears in, his actual first appearance is Captain America number one, where he's on the cover hitting Hitler in the face. So uh, that is a very expensive book. You're going to spend tens of thousands of dollars even for the a copy that looks like this. So this is a much more reasonable option to pick up, but it's even getting very expensive. Now that CGC 7.0 was a jump of 50% from just a week ago. On April 3rd, there was a sale of $3,599. So and that was the prior high sale of that book. So this that book is really moving up right now. I don't know if it's because of maybe speculation that people think they might see Captain America in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier or or, or what, what's really driving that, but it is a book that is moving up quickly. Uh, it is an extremely iconic cover. You know, I mean, you've got Captain America right on the front. And, and actually, I, I used to have an 8-0 of the book, but... I mean, I don't know what it was. I, I got that book, I don't know, maybe a year ago. I got it in, in hand, and it just, I don't know, it didn't speak to me. It wasn't, it wasn't a book I, I really liked that much, you know, for some reason, and so I decided to sell it. I love this book. <laughs> so I, I don't know what the difference is. You know, that 8 it didn't do it for me. I passed it on, you know, to someone else. But, but this book that is clearly a 0.5 uh, was, I, I just, I, I love the look of this book. Um, but even in, in a 0.5, it's no longer cheap. A uh, 0.5 sold on March 27th for $915, so $1,000 is inevitable, I think, with that book. But there are great alternatives. Uh, one that I've actually mentioned before, Fantastic Four number 25, is the second Silver Age appearance of Captain America. It's also a classic Hulk versus Thing cover. It's the first time they're fighting on the cover, and it's, it's pricey, but it's not really out of reach. A 6.5 sold for $625 on March 29th, which I think that was just an absolute steal. Uh, and you could get a lower grade copy for just, you know, a couple hundred bucks. Now, if, if that's still, you know, kind of maybe a little too pricey, the next book you can move on to is Fantastic Four number 26. That's the third Silver Age Captain America. It's also a early Avengers crossover. It's the fourth Avengers crossover. And an 8 sold for only $635 on March 14th. A 4-5 sold for $175 on February 28th. And it's selling at prices that it was selling at years ago. I mean, it really hasn't moved that much yet. So I think that could be a cool book to get into because you've got that Avengers crossover, you've got an early Captain America appearance, uh, and there are a, a, quite a few of them available. There's multiples on eBay right now, uh, including some from my comic shop. So if you remember what I mentioned before, uh, if you see a my comic shop book on eBay, you can go just directly to my comic shop and you'll get it for about 10% less. So uh, that's a book that you can definitely go in and try to pick up as an alternative to, uh, to uh, Avengers number four. This next book is one that I had been looking forward to talking about for a while. I was, I was waiting to see if there was going to be a sale that really kind of moved it with that book. And I don't have a copy of it. And it's, it's not exactly the book I wanted to talk about, but it's related. So it's Black Knight number five. And we saw a CGC 6.5 sell for $780, but a, a 5.0 sold for $372 back in December. So this felt like a pretty big move to me. And this is the first incarnation of the Black Knight from Atlas Comics, which eventually turned back into Marvel. And so this, these books, they don't come up for sale very often, these early Black Knight books. Um, but the reason that these ones are really moving is because of 
you know, Jon Snow, Kit Harington, that's going to be playing the uh, Black Knight character in the upcoming Eternals movies. And those Eternals books are starting to move finally. You know, Eternals 1 and 9, 8 that had been stuck around $1,000 for a while is recently selling around 3000 There was a $2,880 sale this weekend. Uh, and so the Black Knight books, which are, again, it's going to be related, are also starting to move. Now, because those books are so rare, you know, Black Knight number one, I'll plug in a picture up here. That one has gotten very expensive. Uh, this has gotten very expensive. There are some great alternatives to it. And one of them is right here. And that is a book that, that I have, uh, Avengers 47. Uh, now, this is the first appearance of Dane Whitman. And that's the person who becomes this next incarnation of the Black Knight. The Black Knight that we expect to actually see in that uh, Eternals movie. And this book is still dirt cheap to, to me. I mean, it's an awesome cover. It's this yellow cover, Magneto on the front. An 8-0 sold for $410 on April 7th. A 9-0 sold for $567 on March 30th. I mean, that that is a book that, that you can get a nice high-grade copy for just, you know, maybe $400, $500, and lower or mid-grade copies, you can get $100, $200, bucks, even less. So I think that is a great speculation book to pick up if you're thinking about kind of that Eternals movie and, and a, some type of play on uh, the, the Black Knight, uh, because it is rumored that Kit Harrington has signed on for multiple movies, so I, I would expect to see him throughout, you know, the Eternals movies or related movies in the future. Now, another book that to, to pick up that's probably a better book, but it's going to cost you a little bit more, I don't have a copy of, and that's Avengers 48, so I'll, I'll plug in a picture up here. And that's the first appearance of that Black Knight character, you know, Dane Whitman as the Black Knight. And it's a little pricier, a 6 -0 sold on April 12th for $663, so just a couple days ago. A 9 -0 sold for $1,400 on April 4th, but... A 3.5 sold for only $125 on March 29th. So that's still a book that you can get into without having to spend, you know, multiple hundreds or thousands of dollars. And you can have something that, that you know, you're, you're ready for that movie to come out and if anything that might end up moving with it. Obviously, for the Eternals movie, I think the best plays on that movie are Eternals 1, 2, and 3, which is why, if, again, if you watch my Instagram, <laughs> you've seen I have multiple copies of those books. Uh, that is a book that I think is still undervalued even with all the movement that it's had because we haven't had a trailer yet the instant we see a trailer i think those books are just going to explode um but this is another book to you know avengers 47 avengers 48 and if you've you know if you've got a lot of money on hand go for that black knight number one you know the the original one from atlas comics that one i'm sure will also move quite a bit but given how rare it is I think the, the market for that is maybe a little smaller than what you're going to see with an Avengers book. The next book that I wanted to talk about, I, I wanted to show that the movement that we're seeing is not just in books that are related to something that's going on in the MCU, whether it's on Disney Plus with one of their shows or a movie that, that's going to be coming out. And, and the book that I have for that is Conan the Barbarian number one. And it's a great cover. You know, he's right on the front. Uh, this is also one of the books that's considered to be the start of the Bronze Age, uh, along with Green Lantern 76, as well as a couple others. And this was a huge sale that we saw this week. There was a CGC 9.6 that sold for $3,600. The prior high was on March 24th, and that was $2,888. So we saw a jump of over $700, I mean 25% about, in just a few weeks. So that is a big big move in that book but you can still pick up lower grade copies of it you know it's a bronze age book so there are a lot of them um, and you know the, the price difference that you're going to see between low grade copies and high grade copies is pretty substantial so you can get up get copies in the two to four range if you can find them for around 100 to 250 dollars and there are also some other great books that are in this run uh, that that you could consider picking up like issues 23 and 24 which are the, however you want to look at it, you know, cameo and first full or, or whatever you want to say for uh, Red Sonia. Uh, I actually, I like the cover for 24 better. I think that's a, you know, it's her first cover appearance. I think that's a great book. But issue 23 is the more expensive one. 
Unlike with Hulk 180 and 181, where 181 is the much more expensive book, in this case, 23 is the much more expensive book. Um, now, there's no news around it. Uh, a big reason for that is Marvel and Disney don't own the rights to Conan. And so there's not really any news or you know speculation that we're going to see these characters in any movies anytime soon. But to me, what that says is it shows that it's, like I said, not just MCU news that is moving these books it's keys across the board and you know maybe it's something where as we're seeing people really raise the prices on a lot of these other keys they're starting to move off into other books like Conan number one now the next book I also I wanted to again show that it's not just Marvel where we're seeing these big increases in prices uh, we saw a record sale for the new Teen Titans number two in a CGC 9.8 that sold for $1,200. I'll put a, a picture up here. Used to have a copy of that book. I, I sold it a few months ago, so I, I don't anymore. But this is the first appearance of Deathstroke. And I'm not really sure what's driving up that. Could be that we saw him at the end of the Snyder Cut in that, that epilogue uh, meeting with Lex Luthor. And so that could just be when people are maybe thinking that there's a chance that we're going to end up seeing that character you know, in the future. But... I don't know how much hope there is for that. I mean, it seems like Warner Brothers and AT&T and all that don't really seem too interested in moving forward with anything with the Snyderverse. But, I mean, that, that, is, a, that is a big move. It, its prior high sale was $999 on March 26th, so uh, that's a 20% that's a move in that book in only a couple of weeks. Um, now, this is, again, this is a book that you don't really need to go to any alternatives. There are plenty of these available. It's a you know, bronze, copper age book and an 8.5 recently sold for $209 on March 25th, a 6.0 sold for $100 on March 30th. So, I mean, that's a book that you can definitely get into without having to spend a, a ton of money on it. Now, if you wanna go for something that's a little more rare with that book, this is you know a time period when you can start getting into the newsstands. And so a newsstand 9.8 sold on April 2nd for $1,299. And with this recent sale of 1,200 for a direct, at $12.99 looks like a, a big steal um, because like I've mentioned before this is an earlier book so there are more newsstands but the newsstands in a 9.8 are significantly more rare uh, when you're talking about that 9.8 grade and so even though there were more newsstands the 9.8 newsstand is more rare and so that is why they command that premium uh, even when there were more newsstands overall that are present. Now, the last books that I wanted to talk about were X-Men. And, you know, I've, I've got my X-Men books up here, uh, at least my, my favorite X-Men books up there. And I am not talking about them this week because of record sales. Actually talking about them because I saw the opposite of that this week. I was pretty surprised by it. Uh, now, like I've mentioned, I... I, I follow the Heritage Auction. That's one of the big ones that I like to follow to, to make this video. And I priced a lot of X-Men books. There were a lot of X-Men books that were up for sale this week. I looked at 31 of them. And only six, I'm gonna say maybe seven, exceeded my expectations by more than 10%. And so that's only 20% of the books that, that really exceeded my expectations for sales this week. And, and those books were X-Men 12, which is uh, that guy up over there, you know, uh, the first appearance of Juggernaut, X-Men 32, which is also an early appearance of Juggernaut, X-Men 64, which is the first appearance of Sunfire, and I know there's been some speculation around that character, X-Men 101, which is uh, this guy over here, <laughs> the first appearance of Phoenix, and X-Men 131. And then the one that I'm kind of saying it was partial was X-Men 266, which is the first appearance of Gambit, but it was only for the 9.6. The 9.6 had a solid sale, but there was a 9.4 that had a, a weak sale. So so kind of kind of half counting it. Now the rest of them, I, I said, were either flat, which, you know, kind of within that 10% or lower than expectations. So lower than 10% of what I was expecting that book to sell for. And that included a lot of big books. It was X-Men 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 9, 10, 50, 94, 95, 100, 130, 139, and 142. And so, I mean, that's a lot of, a lot of keys and that were selling for flat or less than what I was expecting. 
And uh, that, the reason I, I want to talk about this is that that was the polar opposite of what I saw two weeks ago. And so out of those 31 books that I priced, about 20% were exceeding you know, expectations and 80% were flat or lower than expectations. When I priced those books two weeks ago, when I, when I had said, you know, it was just records across the board, I mean, that's what it was. It was basically the opposite of that. It was 80 or 90% of those books were just crushing records. And even last week, it was the same thing. It was a very high percentage of those books that were beating my expectations on their sales numbers. So I was trying to think, what could be causing this? You know, is it, uh, is it that people are losing interest in X-Men or anything like that? And, and, and I, I, don't, I don't think that's the case. Uh, I think that we've seen these huge moves in these books recently and people are you know maybe thinking that maybe we're starting to hit the the point where that's where these books should be approximately priced at now and they're moving on to other books like Conan number one you know we're seeing big moves in some of these less uh, well-known titles so people are kind of turning their gaze from you know one of the uh, one of the main titles to other ones that haven't moved yet I mean for example uh, you know, that book back there, that X-Men 94, six weeks ago, that was a $1,200 book, $1,300 book. It's now a $3,000 to $3,500 book. That's a 200% increase in about six weeks. And, and like I mentioned before, if you're new to comics, that is not normal. <laughs> you know, you might see something like that for some, you know, $5 book moving on, you know, show speculation, but not a $1,000 book moving 200% in six weeks. That is unheard of and so you know those are big moves and it could be just people kind of taking a breather on x-men and moving on to some some other uh some other titles uh, now one thing that was also different with this auction was that it was huge compared to other heritage auctions i, I traditionally watch on on these sunday nights um they're normally 500 lots you know even as low as like 300 to 350 lots this one exceeded 700 lots it was six hours long, and if you're on the East Coast, it ended at about 1 a.m. And so you could, they could have been missing a huge percentage of the country in purchasing just because they're just like, I'm going to sleep. And so that, that could have been one of the things that was, was driving down those prices. And for me, that's one of the things that I, I personally, I, I was watching and uh, I picked up a couple books because that's what I saw. And one of the areas that I've been looking at books to get are high grade copper and bronze age books. Specifically, I like to go for things that are like nine eights uh, because there are a lot of books uh, when you're talking about copper and bronze, there's a lot of those books that were printed. A lot of them are still available and a lot of them are in good condition. And so I'd like to go for that kind of that highest grade possible. I'd like to try to get nine eights. And uh, that leads us to what is in this box. So I'm gonna open this and we'll, we'll talk about this book. All right, so if you happen to follow me on Instagram, uh, you may have seen that I recently sold uh, this book up here, uh, which is a CGC 9.2 white pages copy of Fantastic Four Annual Number no. 6. And that is the first appearance of Annihilus. It's also the first appearance of Franklin Richards. Um, and I took the sale of that book and I put it into this book. Uh, this is a book that I have wanted in a 9.8 for quite a while and like I said I, I'm going for these kind of high grade copper and bronze age books and I think those ones are the next ones to really start moving we're seeing it already with X-Men 101 we're seeing it with X-Men 94 and so I kind of wanted to get a couple of these books before I think they're just going to explode and kind of get outside of the range of where I can get them and uh, that book is X-Men number 129, and it's a CGC 9.8 white pages copy. Uh, it is the first appearance of Kitty Pride. It is the first appearance of Emma Frost, and it is the first appearance of Sebastian Shaw. It is an awesome book. It has three first appearances, two big first appearances. Sebastian Shaw, I kind of put a little lower, uh, but Kitty Pride, I mean, she is one of 
the most popular characters. I think the MCU is definitely going to use her. She was used, but they wasted that character. You know, they just had her as a kid basically running through walls. But, you know, as, as an adult, she's a badass. <laughs> she, would, she, is, she would be a great character, like Ant-Man, for having kind of like some cool close combat fighting scenes. I mean, I think I remember, I think it was one of the stories where she like she takes like hand grenades and puts them inside people. <laughs> you know, that's the kind of thing that she can do. And you could have some just incredible fight scenes with her. And so I, I think she's one that they can really leverage. Emma Frost is just a fan favorite. And Sebastian Shaw, I mean, we saw him. You know, he was in X-Men First Class. He was the main villain. And so he's not he's definitely not a, a nothing character. And uh, but uh, I, I, I love this cover. It's unfortunate that, that, you know, she's not on it, but it's still, it's, it's a cool cover. It's got Colossus right on the front, Storm and Wolverine. Um, I like the, the color on the X-Men. I like that, that pink color on the X-Men. Um, and uh, this one, it's like the wrap is, is just perfect on it. And, I mean, it's really square. You know, it's very even up on the top, you know, right above the Marvel Comics group. I mean, I just, yeah. I, I really like this book. <laughs> I like I said I'd been I'd been looking for a nine point eight for a while. Uh, the opportunity came up, and like I said, I kind of I moved that that money from that Fantastic Four into this. Now, the other reason for me doing that because you know you might say like Fantastic Four Annual Six is, is definitely another big spec book that's out there. You know, people think Annihilus is going to be showing up, but I like to look long term at heroes, not villains. And so because if you've then, you know, in kind of comics for, for any appreciable amount of time, you, you kind of start to realize that there are very few villains that retain value in books long term. Uh, heroes retain value. Heroes increase in value. Villains, you know, they'll show up in a movie, they're killed off at the end or something, and then their, their prices go way back down. I mean, think of Ronan the Accuser um, in Fantastic Four 65. I mean, that book was you know, spiked when, when he showed up in the Guardians of the Galaxy movie, and it is dirt cheap now. So that's why I like to go for things that are like heroes, and I think this is an awesome book to pick up right now. And I would definitely be looking for Bronze Age, Copper Age, hero first appearances, because there are a bunch of them in X-Men, starting at X-Men 94, you know, for, for multiple years. You know, you've got, like I've got back here, you know, the first, first Phoenix, you've got... First Star Jammers, you've got First Alpha Flight, you've got, you know, Kitty Pride, you've got Weapon Alpha, you have the, uh, and right at the, the kind of the end of that time frame where it transitions from X-Men to Uncanny X-Men, you've got the Days of Future Past storyline, you've got X-Men 141, which is a huge book. And so, I mean, there's a lot of great books to pick up in there, and I would definitely recommend trying to get in on those before it, they start getting very expensive. And that's what, I, that's what I'm doing, and, you know, like I said, I, I'm, I'm not making recommendations that I don't actually believe in and, and you know, put my money into, and, and I'm saying, like, this is, a, this is a big book. I mean, that was a expensive Silver Age book that I sold, and this one was approximately the same price, and so I, I just put it into that because it's a book that I, I wanted more. I didn't have as much interest in the, you know, Fantastic Four Annual 6, and it's a book that I also think is a, a better book longer term, just kind of with the hero aspect of it versus, you know, the villain being the main character. I realize Franklin Richards is also uh, also in that Fantastic Four annual number six, but uh, Annihilus is, you know, he's the on the cover. That's really the main character that, that is of interest with that book. Uh, now, jumping back to, you know, the potentially the cause of the, uh, the drop in prices in those X-Men books, it was, I'm not, I'm definitely not saying that this was a weak auction by any stretch. Um, when I'm prepping for these videos, you know, when I'm looking at for, for books for these videos, I, I price a lot of books. And uh, so this week I priced 196 books from that auction out of about, you know, the 700. And of that, there were 43 books that made me take note, you know, books that were, I was like, wow, that was an incredible sale. You know, that was a really high sale, record sale, that kind of thing. And I mean, that's a significant percentage. I mean, out of 196 books, for me to take note of, of 43 of them, you know, over 20%, that, that is quite a bit. Because there are other books that, you know, will have notable sales, but I can't sit there and watch for six hours. You know, I, it's the ones that I, that I captured for that. I mean, it's, it's just, it's a little much for, for six hours. But, uh, um, so, but so it is a significant amount that I was actively watching, saw and said, wow, that was, you know, an incredible sale. So is definitely still a very strong 
comic you know sales market it just happened to be that the x-men books didn't have those those a bunch of those record sales now they weren't necessarily bad sales you know i mean they were in line with kind of what i would have expected but given what we've seen the previous few weeks in line was not what we had been seeing it had been you know record after record after record so that's why it really made me take note that maybe these are taking a little bit bit of a breather and people are you know kind of moving on to to some other books for now and and you know they'll likely come back to them after those other books start to go up but uh, that's just what i saw this week it's just one data point but uh, i thought it was worthwhile to to talk about so uh, if you thought this video was useful you know if you enjoyed this video please hit that like button hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this and I will see you in the next video.